Hello, my name is Logan and I'm your host, The Mighty Pirate. In today's episode, I'm going to start discussing aerospace in terms of the Battletech universe. I'm just starting to research this topic, so there are many manuals and sources I haven't even begun to start reading, so there may be some errors when referring to old lore versus updated lore. This will only be scratching the surface of just how many vehicle types exist. However, I hope you enjoy it just the same, and if it's well received, I'll write more on this topic. I will be covering dropships as a starting point in this to give a base understanding of travel and logistics in the Battletech universe. Most spacecraft are armed with similar technology and armaments as their ground-based counterparts. However, before we get into the details, one needs to understand the huge space in between the stars. A journey would be near impossible without dropships, and as a result, dropships are some of the most valuable vehicles in the Battletech universe, mostly because to wage war and commence trade at a galactic level requires a ship large enough to hold armies and supplies. This itself prevents a variety of challenges, but with the near infinite resources of the inner sphere, there is a ship designed for every challenge. Dropships are at the core of every invasion force and often the core of every planetary defense, as most planets can't afford to have a static planet-side army of aircraft and mechs. In the Battletech universe, a dropship is defined as any spaceship massing between 200 and 100,000 tons that itself is incapable of faster than light travel. They essentially conduct all other aspects of space travel, including transit in between planets and jump points and planetary landings. For faster than light interstellar movement, they'll dock with a jump ship by means of a docking collar. Since dropships are meant to be carried by jump ships, a docking collar is an implied necessity and is automatically included in the structure of any dropship. Dropships are the workhorse of interplanetary space travel, and it is the dropships that move cargo and passengers in between planetary surfaces, orbits, space stations, and jump points. While transport is the primary role, some have been built with special purposes, such as acting as a tug, rescue ships, or even designed as combat dropships. Accordingly, a wide and diverse variety of dropships exist. Even though many dropships serve as military spaceships, naval terms such as corvette, destroyer, cruiser, and so forth are never applied to them. These terms are exclusively used for true warships, for example the huge combat jump ships that outclass dropships by typically massing several hundreds of thousands of tons, or even millions of tons. While dropships are often very large for their tonnage compared to their ground and water-based combat vehicles, they reserve most of their enormous volumes for cargo. As a result, crew facilities, and dropships are usually cramped inside, featuring relatively little in the way of creature comforts or extra space. Every possible hole or space in a dropship has some sort of system or mechanism important to the operation and maintenance of the vessel. Most crews live in small Spartan quarters bunking four crewmen or more apiece. Though Star League era dropships, as well as some of the newer dropships in the late 30-60s, feature comparatively spacious twin cabins. The exception for this is passenger liners, which afford their attendants a bit more privacy. Dropships are typically very public places with very little in the way of luxuries or things to do during one's downtime. Dropships are based around two basic hull forms, aerodyne and spheroid, more commonly known as egg shape. With the design based on their intended role, dropships can be constructed using these two alternative approaches. Spheroid dropships use their sheer thrust to vertically descend onto a planetary surface and take off in the same way. This allows them to operate independent from runways or even spaceports, making them ideal for exploring unknown planets and giving them a tactical advantage in military operations. However, their simple and versatile landing and takeoff pattern comes at a great risk. There is no failsafe whatsoever. They are utterly dependent on the functionality of their powerful engines to generate lift and a control computer to manage their unstable flight. These systems require more maintenance than aerodyne ships and their failure means a swift and deadly crash landing that leaves few, if any, survivors or even salvageable parts. Any dropship that is not spheroid in design is considered aerodyne, even if it is in fact incapable of atmospheric operations. Truly, aerodyne dropships are shaped roughly similar to a conventional aircraft. They are generally smaller than spheroid dropships, with the biggest known aerodyne class ship being a 17400 ton Conquistador. Through their speed, they generate lift within atmosphere which makes them easier to control. Even if the ship suffers damage or loses its thrust, it often still can make an emergency landing, so that the crew and cargo might survive. Aerodyne dropships usually require runways to land and take off, making them impractical where runways are not readily available. Some, however, such as the Leopard, can operate from very short or makeshift runways, making them almost as versatile as their spheroid cousins. 
Although all dropships are either spheroid or the aerodyne subtype, there's arguably a third subtype, ships which are limited to operating in deep space for one reason or another, and would be destroyed when attempting to enter atmosphere or land on a planet, rendering the differences between aerodyne and spheroid designs irrelevant to them. Examples include the super large behemoth class cargo hauler, which is a spheroid design but has insufficient acceleration for planetary operations, and would be described as too large and fragile to operate in gravity, and the Anomaly Aerodyne Achilles and Vengeance class military dropships, which were never designed for atmospheric operations. In addition to their type, dropships have mission profiles that they were originally designed for. They include the following an assault role serving as the primary military dropship with design focused for maximum firepower, typically used as an anti aerospace fighter or anti dropship tool. They can be used for ground assault purposes, but this is very rare. A liner role, which is a civilian dropship designed for passenger service, a Q ship, which is a military conversion of a civilian vessel, a pocket warship, which is a military dropship designed to carry capital missiles and sometimes subcapital weaponry, most typically heavily armed with standard battle mech scale weaponry, mech carriers, which is a type of dropship designed to bring battle mechs directly into combat, a cargo ship, which is typically a civilian model of ship used for hauling bulk cargo. Some of these ships are fitted to transport liquids and are usually referred to as liquid carriers. And then finally, fighter carrier or aerospace carrier. The maintenance cost of a dropship usually costs more in resources in a year than the average citizen in the Battletech universe would make in several lifetimes. The chassis itself costs a large fortune to make, let alone the weapons, armor, avionics, and the powerful engines required to lift it off the ground. The smallest known spaceship to meet the dropship criteria is arguably the 200-ton 1K drop shuttle, although it is generally classified as a small craft instead. The largest dropship ever constructed is the 100,000-ton behemoth, which due to its sheer size is incapable of leaving gravity wells stronger than 0.6 g's. The biggest dropship that can actually leave atmosphere in standard gravity is the 52,000 ton mammoth. This will conclude my video on dropships. It was a lot of fun to research and if you'd like me to continue aerospace lore videos please let me know in the comments section below. So till the next video, thanks for watching.